welcome to Tyrion Characterology, the show where we investigate the background stories of some of the most prominent characters from around the world of Tyrion. This time, we'll talk about the Asuran progeny, Tymi, in our quest for insight into the group known only as Destiny's Edge 2.0 or the Bee Iconics. Without further ado, let's get started. The story of Taimi begins a short time before she ever meets the rest of the Bee Iconics. Taimi was born with a disease that gradually impairs her motor skill, and so during her time growing up, she decided to build herself a golem named Scruffy to help her with everything from movement to keeping her safe. At the age of 13, Taimi is a student of the College of Synergetics under the apprenticeship of the renowned golemancer Soja. But Taimi has other plans. She seeks a career path similar to that of the infamous Scarlet Briar, of course, only intellectually. For some time, Taimi has tried to study Scarlet's technology, and so as Scarlet begins testing her huge twisted watchwork knights in Lorna's past, Taimi spots the opportunity to get closer to Scarlet. This is where she meets the rest of the Bee Iconic characters, Rox, Brahm, Marjorie, and Casimir, as they are attempting to take down the huge machine before it wreaks too much havoc. They stop the twisted marionette, Scarlet flees, and Taimi never gets in contact with her. Instead, on the battlefield, she is found by Loken Thackeray, who tries to save her out of the dangerous situation that she has gotten herself into, but Taimi is having none of it. You're a child. You're a super genius. What are you doing out here? Who are you with? I'm not supposed to talk to nosy strangers. Where are your parents? Dead. Uh, okay. Well, you're obviously a long way from home. Y you come with me. I'm not going with you until I know where you're taking me. To Lion's Arch, then to Radasum. You've got no business out here on the battlefield. Are you paying the waypoint fees? Yes. Now come on. You seem like a pleasant enough travel companion. Come on, Scruffy. This nice human is taking us home. On their way back to Radasum, they stop by Lion's Arch. Here, Logan has come to see Marjorie Delacroix, who has been investigating Scarlet's schemes. Did you see that twisted marionette? I did. And I heard there are jungle worms erupting from the ground in Blood Tide Coast. That's because they're disturbed by Scarlet's seeking devices. What does a little squirt like you know about Scarlet, anyway? As it so happens, I know a lot. I've been studying her for months. I came to meet her, but she didn't show up. To meet her? Why would you want to do that? Because she's brilliant, of course. My theory is that she knows something about the dragons, and that's why she's building an army. Your theory, huh? You don't think she's just a big old meanie? Do you always talk like a four-year-old? On their way out of Lion's Arch, Logan and Taimi incidentally bump into the Norn Brahm Airson. Taimi quickly comes up with a plan to get free of Logan by tricking Brahm into taking care of her. Help! Help! Save me from this creepy human! It's okay, I'm a Crichton Seraph. The kid's in no danger. Brahm! Don't let him take me away! Please! <sighs> Are you her guardian? Who, me? Wolf's teeth, no! I've never seen her before in my life! Bram, you're so mean! Can't we just go home now? Listen, buddy, I don't know what your game is, but you better get this kid to safety. She's got no business on a battlefield. What? I swear, I've never seen her before in my life. Despite Brahm's resistance, he quickly finds himself responsible for the tiny Asuran girl. Unfortunately, as they are preparing to leave the city, Scarlet's officer, Mitrin, escapes the Lion's Arch Jail, and so Taimi, determined to follow Scarlet's trail, follow Mitrin through a portal to the edge of the mists. Brahm rush after her through the portal, and manages to catch up with her as Scruffy accidentally breaks down, leaving Taimi in a vulnerable position. Luckily, Brahm is there to protect her, and at the edge of the mist, the two become a lot closer. Brahm? Are we still going to be friends when we get back? Wait, are we friends now? I think so. You don't boss me around as much as other adults. And when you ask a question, you let me answer it. Well, I'm friends with Frostbite, and he can't even talk. So yes, Tiny, we'll still be friends. Not if you keep calling me Tiny. Ram, will you tell me a story while we wait? <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a brave handsome Norn named Bram. Ah, I've heard this one already. From you. Twice. They fix up Scruffy and return to Lion's Arch, only to find that Scarlet is attacking the city. Taimi, along with the population of Lion's Arch, is evacuated to the Vigil Keep, while the rest of the Bee Iconics, along with the Pack Commander, charge against Scarlet's machine to put an end to her madness. They succeed and kill Scarlet, but not in time to stop her from waking the Elder Dragon Mortimoth. 
As the heroes are celebrating their victory, Taimi join in, but she's worried about the situation. Hi, what's so funny? Hey, who let the rabbit out of its cage? That's not funny. Join us, Taimi. We're celebrating our victory over Scarlet. Would you like some juice? I suppose we should celebrate while we still can. You know, don't you? Scarlet wasn't just fooling around. Much as I loathe to even entertain the idea, I do believe you're right. And here we thought Scarlet was the worst of our problems. I'm not afraid of no dragon. Ram, I'll have to take you to the brand sometime. No single warrior can stand alone against a dragon. Fortunately, we have each other. <laughs> <laughs> what? You on our team, Squeak? How could we possibly lose? They all settle for a time, and Timey once again gets to talk with her new friend, Brahm. Did you get in trouble for roaming the camp? No. Yes. Zoja gave me extra calculations as a punishment, and I never got to see Scarlet. Sounds like Zoja cares about you. No, she doesn't. She cares about her record. If I do well, it reflects positively on her as my college mentor. So you don't like Zoja's college? I was not designed to be in synergetics. I was designed for statics. I don't know what that means. It means I'd rather make stuff than talk about making stuff. Oh, yeah. Me too. The Captain's Council begin looking for the funds to rebuild Lion's Arch. Coincidentally, the Sephirite Sanctum return to honor an agreement with the Captain's Council. Taimi, Marjorie, and Casimir all venture to the Sanctum to learn more about the Sephirites. Taimi is particularly curious about their magical crystals, but even with her golem Scruffy by her side, she struggles getting on board. We'll find a way to get you onto the Zephyr Sanctum, even if it's just for a little while. I appreciate that, but don't bother. I deal with obstacles every day. This is just one I can't get around... yet. But you're a part of our team. We're ready to help you get around those obstacles you couldn't otherwise. Really? That's very... No one ever... I mean, I never... Well, well thank you, Lady Casmore. The Sephirites resume their travels after their business with Lion's Arch, but as they fly towards the Maguma jungle, their ship is sabotaged and bombed out of the sky. The heroes venture after the crashed ship to try and save the Sephirites, and so they enter into Dry Top, a desolate wasteland terrorized by the minions of the Waking Dragon. Here, Taimi finds a mining town in the desert, and in this small town she finds a tiny house once housed by Scarlet Briar. Time you begin digging deeper into Scarlet's life and find a curious holographic recording of Scarlet. Holo magic is amazing. I'll use it to record my life, my failures, and my successes. Scholars of the future will study them. Are you out there, scholars? <laughs> I'm here, Scarlet. I'm here. While digging through all of Scarlet's things in a tiny house, Timey stumbles across Scarlet's notes indicating the presence of a ley line hub in Dry Top. Mordremoth's power spread far and wide, influencing the waypoints all over Maguma, Krita, and far into the Shiver Peak Mountains. Timey decides to try and find a solution to the waypoint problem. She follows the trail of Scarlet to an enormous ley line hub where the streams of magic are so powerful that they are visible to the naked eye. At the center of this hub, they find that Scarlet has built a laboratory. And here, Timey finds something very curious. Hey, look, look! Can you believe your eyes? Ugh, what is it? It's Omad's machine, you simpleton! Hey, respect. Sorry, but it's the very device that showed Scarlet the eternal alchemy! It still works! Can I smash it? That thing's gotta be dangerous. Absolutely not! Think about what we can learn! Besides, my mind is far more resilient than Scarlet's was. Um, I don't think you should mess with it. Oh no! We have to- <gasps> Don't touch anything. We don't know what- Timey! <laughs> Can't get close. That thing is shooting off too much lightning. I'll shield you. Get her out of there. As Timey rush in, the pack commander rush after her to try and save Timey, but gets caught inside the machine. Pack Commander is dragged out of the vision created by the machine. Ah, uh, I wish I'd seen it. I'm glad you're okay, but you had magic flowing out of your ears. <laughs> Digressions aside, Timey sets to work. I can build a device that will make the waypoints more efficient. They'll be less attractive to Mordramoth. But in the process, the Arcane Council of Ratasum receive news that an underage Asura is building something worthwhile, and so they sent Counselor Flunt to supervise Timey's project. 
But as soon as Flunt sees that the machine works, he decides to act. Timey, as a ward of the College of Synergetics of Ratasum, you are required to hand over all inventions for study and documentation. I hereby claim proprietorship over this waypoint recalibration device. I will hold it in trust for you until your graduation. No! I made this on my own time outside of Radasum. Irrelevant! Hand it over like a good progeny and we will see you at the summit. No! I won't let you take it! Tommy, no! You wouldn't dare disobey your superiors, would you? Just hand it Here, over. Come on! Calm down and think! I told you! It's mine! Woo! Ah, let's crumble! After that delinquent! Timey and Scruffy flee into the desert with the machine, not wanting to give it away to Flunt. Brahm and the pack commander sets after her to convince her otherwise, but she gets caught by the inquest, who now also want a piece of whatever valuable item Timey is carrying. Stop that golem! Brahm and the pack commander come to her rescue. Hang on, Timey. We're coming. Timey, you okay, kid? Ram, Ram, they were all around me. I, I, I thought... <laughs> hey, hey now. You're okay. You're fine. They're all gone. We've got your back. You're safe now. The pack commander convinced Timey to hand over her machine so as to convince the Arcane Council to attend a summit of the world leaders, arranged by the pack commander. All right. I'll do anything if it helps us get rid of Mordermoth. That's a good decision, Progeny. You're lucky to be alive. That's a good decision, Progeny. You're lucky to be alive. Fine, take it. But if you break it, you pay for it. As the threat of Mordermoth grows, the group venture into the Silver Wastes in search of answers. Here, Timey comes seeking a famous char named... Rune Ingot Spitter. My name's Timey. I'm dedicated to learning as much of what you know as I can. Well, I'll be. Your command of metal magical integration is awe-inspiring. We studied your progressive layering techniques in class. That's so. Well, what makes you think I'd teach you anything? Because I'm the smartest, most earnest student you'll ever have? That remains to be seen. But we can talk. A little. Timey wants to learn everything from Rune. Well, paint me orange and call me rusty. You're getting it. You doubted me! I did all my homework, and I have a list of questions to ask you. <laughs> you undersold yourself when you said you were earnest. This is where we leave Timey under the watchful eye of Brune, as the entire B Iconic group is preparing to enter the heart of Maguma to confront Mojamoth. Next time, we'll take a look at the story of Marjorie Delacroix. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, I will see you in the mists.